Here are just some products that I would fight a bitch over. They're all gonna be PR products that I've received, but I would also buy on my own. Some I actually have bought on my own because I love them so fucking much. I'm a bitch, you can't really pay me to say shit. None of this is sponsored. This is genuinely how I feel. And the reason I say fight a bitch is because like a bitch made a video about it. I'll just get into it. Lenny Sleeps. I've been taking these since July. I got them in a PR package. When I fucking tell you I would fight a bitch over these, I'm not kidding you. Some girl on my For You page was like, Lemmy's not all that, like, da 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 And I honestly wanted to comment really hateful things on, like, her video because I was like, you definitely haven't taken Lemmy. If you're gonna, like, say that shit, like, you definitely haven't taken it. I was like, let me not, like, just start internet drama with some random bitch. But when I tell you, since 15 years old, I have been taking any uh, melatonin. I've taken fucking everything. I've taken every single brand. These bitches, the first night I took them, knocked me the fuck out. I love Lemmy so much that anytime I'm with my friends, I'm like, take a Lemmy. Like, you would think I'm Lemmy's drug dealer or whatever the fuck, because the way that I'm like, take a Lemmy. Like, you need a fucking Lemmy. If you have trouble sleeping, I am like, so ride or die for Lemmy. You have no fucking idea. To that bitch that was like, it's not all that, take it. Just take it. Just take the fucking pill. Like, or just take the vitamin. And I'm gonna tell you right now you're gonna be like oh i was wrong next this one's new but this one is like replaced my summer fridays and if you remember i would put summer fridays on in every single one of my videos i don't even fuck with summer fridays that have you any okay love you guys but like fenty skin their little lip thingy their lip mask i have it on right now ride or die i'm ride or die for the fenty skin like i genuinely love this one i have a fuck ton of lip products and like this is the one that i'm like Mm -mm -mm. Uh, put it in the cart. I will be repurchasing again. As a given, I actually worked with Grande Lash. I love Grande Lash. You bitches know I had absolutely no eyelashes. And like, we see my videos now with my eyelashes like popping the fuck off. I love Grande Lash. Also, I'm not doing any beauty ones. Like, I'm not doing any makeup ones. That's like a whole different series. This is just other things. We have Sniff. Sniff also has candles, but this specific scent, the Crumb Couture, Bitch, the bottle is gone. The bottle is gone. But I have a lot of their um, perfumes and fragrances. And it's gone. It's literally fucking gone. 10 out of 10. 10 out of fucking 10. I love perfumes. I like to collect perfumes, actually. Like, a little fun fact about me. Top, top three, for sure. Next to, like, my Chanel, my YSL, all those things. We have Sniff. And I love their candles. I had one of their candles, but I had to leave it in New York because that bitch was massive. And it was a really good price for being that massive, but I couldn't bring it to LA with me. Next one's kind of basic. I'm a Sol de Janeiro bitch. Like, I, I do. I fuck with it. I know that everyone's like, oh, this one will, like, give you spiders and shit like that. I think I got this, like, a week or two ago. The fact that I've used so much of this, um, I've seen no spiders. If anything, I just smell fucking good. Like, I just, I just love it. I just really like it. Anyways, I also love the bum. Oh my god, I love the bum bum cream too. If you, if you just want to smell good, like it's Sol de Janeiro. None of this was sponsored. It was my honest and true opinion. I would still fight that bitch about the Lemmy sleeps because, like, they genuinely have changed my life. I'm not kidding you. I actually am so fucking passionate about it. You don't, you guys don't get it. You don't get it. But when you find, like, when you have issues sleeping and you find a sleep pill that you're just like, this is it. Like, and you see a bitch talking shit about it. Like, I was ready to be like, drop your address. I'll come fucking fight your bitch ass. Anyways, these are just the products that I am ride or die for and that I love. If you want to see a makeup one of like all my makeup must-haves, I'll do that. Am I wrong for being rude about giving up a plane seat for a baby? Ooh, I love the entitlement ones. These are so fun when it involves people, parents, and babies on airplanes. My best friend and I spent a month backpacking around Europe. By the time we were going to head home, we were exhausted. To make our flight, we took a 4 a.m. shuttle to the airport and could barely think or keep our eyes open. We had pretty crap seats on our first flight. They were right up against a wall or cubby at the end of the plane and not only didn't recline backwards, but pushed forward a little while the people in front fully reclined into us. Needless to say, we didn't sleep, but it was a quick flight, quick layover, and we were praying for decent enough seats to get a good sleep on our final flight home, which was six and a half hours. Okay, six and a half hours is nothing. Okay, wait till you do the San Francisco to Dubai, 15 hour, 15 and a half hour flight. Then you know what real pain is. I went from SFO to Sydney, pain. Pain in the middle by myself. I still have nightmares about those times. It's so hard. I wish I just, you should just drug me. We are in a three person row, but the aisle seat remains empty as the plane gets closer to finish boarding. We are so excited at this point, thinking we can stretch out and share the spare seat. Boarding is finished, the seat is still empty, and we were so excited to finally get some sleep. 
After boarding, a woman from a few rows down says she noticed the empty seat and asks if she can switch us. We are a bit confused. Then explains that she would ask her seat neighbor to fill our empty seat so that she can have a full seat for her baby. What the fuck? She wants to get a full seat for her baby for which she didn't pay for? Get out of here! We were visibly disappointed. I was super nauseous at this point and just wanted to sleep for a bit. We asked if we can switch seats for a couple of hours because we've been traveling for a long time and we are really wrung out. She said okay. Shortly after we were served a snack. The woman couldn't really manage her baby and asked a flight attendant to hold it so that she could eat. A couple of minutes after this, she came over and said that's it. The man is coming to fill the empty seat. We have to move back to our assigned seats and let her have an extra for her baby. I gave her a rude look and looked away and didn't say a word more. She put her baby seat on the seat next to her, now empty, and that was that. The baby was loud, always whining and crying, but that's nothing you can blame a baby for. She then gave the baby a rattle toy, which was constantly being shaken and really loud, on top of the whining and crying. The mom also shook the rattle toy for the baby to try to get it to quiet down. Didn't work. Making additional noise. This wasn't once or twice, but throughout most of the flight, including lights and windows off slash sleeping time. After we got off the plane, I complained to my friend and she said I was being an asshole for acting so irritated by this woman when she was struggling with the baby. She said I should have been kinder, but that she didn't bring it up or bug me about it because of the irritability of needing sleep and feeling shitty. I'd like to get some outside opinions on whether we should just have offered the seat and whether I'm an asshole for being grumpy about the whole thing. And to clarify, the seat swap didn't happen mid-flight. She charged over after 45 minutes or less and said we had to give up the seat now. Um, you're nice. I would have been like, get the flight attendant. Not my problem. Am I the asshole for telling my ex that it's not my responsibility to help her? I, 31 male, have a set of twins. Violet, 16 female, and Onyx, 16 male. With my ex, Trisha, 31 female. We were the definition of trailer trash. We were addicted to hard substances and dropped out of high school. Her parents had eight kids and a four bedroom trailer, so we couldn't live with them. So we live with my mom. There was domestic violence on both ends, but because I was 6'5", I was always the problem. Damn, that's a big, that's a big man. 6'5", I'm six feet. And anybody that I have to look at, that's, that's a whole lot of man. Two years after our kids were born, Trisha called the cops on me when we were both high and drunk. They found hard substances on me and I got locked up for six years. Trisha moved on immediately with the guy from the trailer park. Her boyfriend didn't want the twins with them, so they stayed with my mom. I'm so glad that she wasn't vindictive and she brought the kids to see me every Friday. During my time in prison, I got clean for my kids. I also got my GED and my associate's degree. I read a lot of science books and I fell in love with physics. So once I got out, my mom helped me out while I finished my bachelor's in mechanical engineering. Good shit. Good shit. I am so proud of you. If no one else has told you, I am so proud of you. I moved my mom and kids out of the trailer park and into a nice house in the suburbs once I had a decent job. My ex took the kids one week in a month, even though her now husband still didn't like my kids. Fast forward to now. I bought my kids cars. My son took his when he visited his mother. The next day, my ex called me demanding I help her with her kids. She explained that they're struggling and her husband's oldest daughter is now complaining about not having a car. What the fuck that got to do with me? I'm sorry, baby. Not you got me waking up. I'm waking up the baby. What the fuck that got to do with me? You better give her some bus tokens. I told my ex that she's not my responsibility and neither are her kids. She said that she'll cut my kids off if I don't give her what she wants. Bitch, bye. They're, they're better off without you any fucking way. These kids are 16 years old. They know you ain't worth the fucking ground that you walk on. I explained that I don't care and she'll be better out of our lives. Later, my kids told me about a text they got from their stepsister saying they're being horrible siblings. Their mom sent them a text asking if they could sell their cars. And when they said no, she flipped out saying she was going no contact and that she didn't raise them to be greedy brats. Bitch, you didn't raise them. Their grandmother did. And then when their daddy got out of jail, they daddy did. Not you trying to take credit for some shit you didn't even do. Bitch, plagiarism is illegal. You can't do that. And if it ain't, it needs to be. My son replied with laughing emojis while my daughter replied with raised question mark, question mark, question mark. She texted me some more junk saying that if they starve to death, it's my fault. My ex is a horrible person, but her kids didn't do anything. Should I give them some money? Hell no. 
absolutely the fuck not. You better not give them shit. Kids got a daddy. No, you will not give them no motherfucking money. They have a dad who don't like your kids. Why should you do for his kids what the fuck he would never do for yours? Absolutely the hell not. It doesn't have anything to do with the fact that her kids didn't do anything. Those are not your children. You have literally had to build yourself from the ground up by yourself just for this bitch to want to run in and reap the benefits of all of your work. Hell no. Fuck her and them goddamn spoiled ass entitled ass kids. My bestie abandoned me after I paid for her entire baby shower. This premise is not my story time. It's on my Instagram. I was working three jobs to pay the baby shower. Put a deposit down on a banquet. Worked my ass off to pay the rest of it. This is when casually Connie told me that she wanted to change the day of the baby shower. Days after I already put down the deposit on the specific day she had asked for. Now she's telling me she wants to change it. At this point, I had already booked myself as much as I could at my job. I needed to pay this off. I explained to her that I was working as much as I could for the baby shower and that I was already booked that day. She said nope. She wanted me to move around my entire day, and she wanted me to move around all of my clients for that day. So I agreed to changing it. I made sure to explain to her that I would be extremely late to the baby shower, but that I would still be there. After that, we never spoke about it again. The day of the baby shower comes around, and I'm late. First thing I do is give Connie a hug. It was a super cold hug. Suddenly, out of nowhere, Connie's sister-in-law comes up to me and asks me why I'm late. I told her I had clients and that I had to stop by to see my mom. And she says, fuck your mom. I've never met this woman, by the way. Connie said nothing. I felt so disrespected and hurt. I wanted to fight her, but because I'm a classy bitch, I didn't. I even helped clean up after the baby shower. Connie never said thank you. The only time Connie reached out was to tell me that she gave birth. Weeks later, I go to her socials only to see that she had blocked me on everything. I'm happy we're not friends anymore. I got pregnant right after that. Husband and I had the baby and we moved to another state. Now I'm pregnant for a second time. She still has me blocked. By the way, that baby shower was beautiful. Even her mom told me so. Healthcare system. Am I wrong when after my mom said I'm useless, I stopped helping? I, female 20, live at home with my single mother and five siblings while I finish university. I'll call them A, male 23, B, male 22, C, male 17, D, female 15, and M, 12. Almost every day, I wash dishes, load and unload the dishwasher, vacuum the common areas, drive my younger siblings to and back from school, and cook dinner while also attending university. I get no help from my mom or siblings, nor do I get any appreciation for what I do. Well, last week on Wednesday, I came home late around 9 p.m. from university as I was talking to my teacher about the lecture. And as soon as I got home, my mom started yelling at me because I wasn't able to cook dinner and there were dirty dishes in the sink. And my brother A had to pick up my younger siblings from school. I was upset, but then she said, you're useless and don't help at all. Hey there, seeking advice on a situation. I've been married for six years and my gut tells me something's off. I don't feel loved and often initiate physical affection without much response. When I am sad or even not too well, he just doesn't seem to care. Like my pain means nothing to him. Even during intercourse, I feel like it's one-sided. When I bring up our relationship, he diverts the topic on house matters or the kids. I've talked about it, but no change. Even just basic conversation, it's like I'm saying nothing. Nothing matters. If it wasn't for the kids, I would have left him. But I can't make the kids struggle. He provides financially, and I appreciate that. But I am losing all feelings for him. Any advice would be helpful. Thanks. Am I in the wrong for kicking my sister out for sleeping in my son's bed? My younger sister, 38, moved in with my family half a year ago after a horrific divorce. We've always been close, so I was more than happy to have her with us. I live with my husband, 45, son, 21, and daughter, 15. She slept in our guest room, or so I thought. My sister and son got really close bonding over a shared hobby, and obviously I thought nothing of it. I mean, how on earth could I? She held him as a baby, but early yesterday morning when I thought my son had gone to work, I went into his room to check something for renovations. They were there sleeping in his bed. I freaked out. I had the absolute worst feeling in my gut. She claimed that they were only sleeping. But her face was bright red and she was wearing this skimpy nightgown. I told her to get out and never come back. My son immediately started defending her, repeating that they were only sleeping and that I needed to stop being mean to her. In my anger, I told him to go with her. They're now out. I have no idea where. I've been a mess. My sister has nowhere to go besides her cheating ex-husbands who has moved his mistress in. But I can't get the image and feeling out of my head. My son refuses to come back if she won't be here. Says he'll go wherever she is. It's like he's in love. I'm so sick. But did I overreact? My sister slept with my nephew's friends and now wants me to help her reconcile. Baby, the fuck you mean reconcile? Ma'am. 
My older nephew, Cash, 18, came over to my place two months ago and asked to stay. My sister, 40, later called. I asked her what the hell was going on. She explained that she got drunk and accidentally told Cash that she loves my younger nephew, John, 16, more because he brings cute friends over to her place. She admitted to sleeping with two of John's friends and said that she wished Cash would bring handsome friends over as well. What the absolute fuck? Kids, John is 16. So the friends that he's bringing home are between the ages of 14 and 18. These are fucking kids. OP, I would not have any type of relationship with my goddamn sister. You're sleeping with your 16 year old son's friends? Bitch, where is the embarrassment? What, what, what the fuck, what? Before anyone tells me to go to the police, the legal age of consent in our country is 15. So she won't face any punishment for this. Yes, it's very gross, but it's not a crime here. It fucking should be. Needless to say, Cash hasn't gone back yet, except for my sister's birthday yesterday, where he went over to give her a card. My sister tried to convince him to stay, but he left. He came back to my place and my sister called me. She said I should help her convince him. So I told her she's lucky he even went to her birthday at all. My wife told me I was too harsh since she's a woman who's worried her son will never want anything to do with her again. She said, I went too far with what I said. Was she right? No, absolutely not. Your wife was not right in any way, shape or fucking form. Your sister should be fucking worried. She told her 18 year old fucking son that she loves her 16 year old son more because he brought home kids, kids for her to fuck. She should be fucking worried. Her behavior is absolutely fucking disgusting. It is absolutely disgusting. This is not okay, whether it's legal in the country or not. Just because it's legal, don't make it right. That's disgusting. Update. I'll be contacting John's friend's parents and informing them. Thank you. Please do. Please do. Random thought, but do you guys think that's why Cash didn't bring any of his friends home? Because he knew how his mom was and he didn't want his friends to become victims of hers? Like, I know that it could be a reach. I could be reaching real, real far. I'm a fuck around and pull a muscle. But I just feel like that could be a reason as to why her 18-year-old son don't bring his friends home. And the 16-year-old, he don't know no fucking better yet. And now he's learned. Police were called because of leaves. That's going to cost you. My friend keeps a very clean yard. In the fall, he likes to get all of the leaves before it rains and they become a pain to pull up. His neighbor doesn't care about his yard as he has owned the house for a few years and still has not moved in. He lives a few states away. As my friend was finishing up sucking the leaves in his machine, some of them blew into the neighbor's driveway, maybe 20 leaves total. My friend finished up and went inside. About 20 minutes later, there was a knock on the door and a squad car outside. The officer said they received a complaint about leaves being blown into the driveway. The neighbor had been watching on his door webcam and decided this transgression warranted police intervention. You could tell the officer was visibly annoyed as my friend asked the officer to look at his yard and then his neighbors. The pettiness. The neighbor had an old car shipped and dropped in the driveway about eight months ago where it has sat ever since. Remember, he still lives a few states away. While my friend told the officer he would clean the leaves promptly, he asked the officer if he could do him a favor. Check the car for proper tags. The officer saw the car in question and gave a slight smile. While my friend cleaned the leaves out of the driveway, the officers were walking around the car looking at the VIN and running information. You could hear the neighbor on his doorbell asking what the problem was. There is a law that any car that is in the driveway must have tags and insurance on them. The police gave him a call and told him his car was in violation and he either needed to put the car in the garage, which would need to be lifted and dropped in the garage, or get the registration, insurance, and an e-check on the car that can't be driven, taken care of within two weeks, or they'll be back to tow the car and ticket him. Dude cost himself a 10-hour car ride to get his car lifted and stuffed in the garage all over a few dead leaves. Would I be the asshole if I think that my wife needs to do more around the house than just take care of the baby? Before the baby, we used to split the chores around the house. We also have dogs where we both walk in the morning and night. After my wife became pregnant, I was doing a lot more chores around the house, which is fine because she couldn't do as much. I work from home four or five days out of the week, but there are eight to nine hour days, and my work isn't super stressful, but I have a lot of deadlines. After the birth, my mother-in-law and my mom both switched on and off, helping us with the first month. This allowed my wife and I to focus on her baby and allow me to help my wife with whatever she needed. However, after the month of help, both our parents went back home and everything was not 
to us. My wife has been on maternity leave and I haven't taken my leave yet and I don't plan to until my wife goes back to work. I still work my normal hours. However, I still try to help out whenever she asks me to. My wife, my wife on maternity leave is pretty much a stay-at-home mom since all she does is just take care of the baby. However, that's basically all that she does. I joked around with her saying that she's currently a stay-at-home mom and that she's not putting her weight around the house other than taking care of the baby. And I still help her with the baby too. And I'm also the one who takes care of the dog. I cook dinner and most of the one doing the dishes or putting them in the dishwasher. I'm starting to feel burned out with helping the baby and doing the chores. So would I be the asshole? Am I the asshole for not letting my mother-in-law spend time with my baby? So I and my husband Jay have a daughter C. Since she was born, my mother-in-law has been at me asking me when I'm going to have her ears pierced. C will not be having her ears pierced until she asks for it. She says it's hypercritical of me considering all the piercings that I have. Mother-in-law had both of sister-in-laws pierced when they were tiny and she keeps going on about how it's better because they won't remember it. Jay says he supports whatever decision I make on the matter because I'm the one who would have to clean it. So a few weeks ago, Mother-in-law was looking after C for us because I was going with Jay to his uncle's funeral. As I was coming down the stairs, I hear mother-in-law talking to C about how they're gonna go out shopping and get her some pretty earrings. I went into the room and told her in no uncertain terms that that would not be happening and if I can't trust her to respect my decisions about my own daughter, I would find someone else to look after her. Mother-in-law keeps trying to get her for a few hours at a time and even tried to offer to have her overnight so that Jay and I can go out. I refused and I told mother-in-law she could come and visit her, but I no longer trusted her. Must guys do all of this going out, party, sleeping, all, all these? Why do you need to f do all of that to, to find out. to realize that yeah. you let a good thing go? Yeah, I don't and got that thing, mate. Yeah, I don't understand. And you expect us to wait there yeah. for you whilst you've gone with every Tom, Dick, and Harry. Yeah. And then expect us to be waiting there with open arms. Oh, come back, my love. No. Legit, just on your rocking chair. love. No. <laughs> just, like, that love. just on your rocking chair. People are, people are passing you by. Wait, wait. Ah, wait for my man. Wait, wait. So it's, it's I can guess how it's coming. It's coming. Oh, wait. I'm just looking at him. I just wait. Back. No. <laughs> no, that's crazy. We Honestly, stop doing like, this. in the rocking chair, just waiting. On the front porch. No, right. legit. Hair turning gray. Still waiting. Just waiting. Ah, ah, your bones are aching. You're just waiting. Just waiting. Yeah. yeah. It needs to, like, I don't know what it is, but, mm. God. Yeah. But then also. Am I the asshole for telling my adopted sister that she's not my quote-unquote real sister? I, 21 male, have an adopted sister named Anna, 12 female. And let me just get this out of the way. I have nothing against Anna. She's very warm and compassionate, and she affectionately and proudly calls me her quote-unquote big bro. Aww. Also, she's a genius at math, and she's very athletically gifted, too. Her favorite sport is basketball, and she's one of our school's, uh, her school's top basketball players. Here's the thing. Despite the fact that my parents adopted her years ago, and she's known me for most of her life, I don't think of her as my real sister. We've... Uh, we're <laughs> I'm gonna I'm just gonna have to say some stuff that gets cut out, aren't I? Just wait, hold on. We're obviously not biologically related, and we look nothing alike. She is East Asian. She is of Okinawan ethnicity. Where an I and I don't know if I said that right, I apologize. Um, whereas I and the rest of my biological family are white Americans. This past June, I brought my girlfriend, twenty one female, over to my parents' house and to finally introduce her to them. Anna had to butt in, and she was so excited to what meet me. What do you mean butt in? Hold on. Rewind. Zip. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's... Go fuck yourself. I'm, I'm so mad already. Really? What do you mean butt in? It's your sister. Anna had to butt in, and she was so excited to meet my girlfriend, and she introduced herself to my girlfriend as my sister. I had to excuse myself. This is so evil. This is so this evil. This is very evil. Get Get ready. Yeah. Okay. I had to excuse myself, and I brought Anna into the garage. Uh, no. And I told her that she was embarrassing me in front of my girlfriend. Oh, my God. And that we are not siblings. You should not have a family at all. Any family. <laughs> Any family at all. You should never have them anymore. I'm sorry. You lost it. It's done. You're telling a 12-year-old? Ruining a 12-year-old's life right now in, in just a or few short trust sentences. trust in you. That's in cool. their trust, yeah. Um, I wasn't yelling at Anna, but I wasn't particularly nice to her either. Anna was crushed, and she started crying, and she ran to my parents and told them what happened. It completely ruined my and my girlfriend's day. Yeah, it's important what happened to you, yeah. Good, yeah. Good, good for you. Good for you thinking about yourself after you just... You bully a 12-year-old, your own sister. 
How about you, you, you shut the fuck up and fuck <laughs> off forever? How about that? Anna is still depressed these days. But I just can't help how I feel. At best, we're more like good friends, but I still don't think of her as my real family. Wow. Am I the asshole? Am I wrong for being upset with the clothes my granddaughter wore on her way out of the maternity ward? I know it sounds silly, but I would really love an outside opinion and I'll accept any judgment. I have four children and five grandchildren and for all of my grandchildren, I made a knitted clothes and hat for them to come out. It began with my first grandchild and all the ones that followed, my kids asked me to do it. It's customary in my country for clothes to be a certain color to represent something good like health, peace, and protection. Now, I don't do this professionally and I work, so it's something I do in my spare time and it takes months. I also want to say I never force my children to accept it. Actually, they ask right after they announce their pregnancy. And that's exactly what happened with my oldest daughter, Pam. She told me she was pregnant and asked me to make it for her daughter, and of course I said I would. She picked the color red, and honestly, it was one of the prettiest jobs I've ever done and finished within seven months of her pregnancy. She gave birth about 20 days ago, and my granddaughter was born healthy, perfect, and bright. But I was heartbroken on their way out when I found out my granddaughter would not wear the clothes I made. Instead, she was wearing clothes that Pam got from her in-laws from a very expensive brand like Gucci. I said nothing to my daughter about it, but in a conversation with my Bathroom son, clean. I just that I was heartbroken. It's just upsetting to me because she did ask me. Am I wrong for being upset with the clothes my granddaughter wore on her way out of the maternity ward? I was heartbroken when they came out and I found out my granddaughter would not wear the clothes I made but ones Pam got from her in-laws. I said nothing to Pam but in a conversation with my son, I just vented that I was heartbroken and wouldn't have a problem if she didn't ask. And I didn't share this information to expose my daughter but my son could tell I was kind of down and wanted to know what was wrong. Well, the word spread among my children until it reached Pam in the form of scolding. She angrily called me saying that she didn't believe I was jealous of another clother and her daughter could wear them anytime. But I decided to make this moment about me and not celebrate my granddaughter's life. To be honest, I'm lost. I'm heartbroken that I've been making something so lovingly for months for a specific moment and not been told at any point she wouldn't use it. My family is divided. Some are criticizing me and others are really on my side. So am I in the wrong for being upset with the clothes my granddaughter wore? Please let me know. Am I the arsehole for not listening to my mother-in-law speech at my wedding? So I just hate speeches. I've never really seen the appeal for them and I just think they're really boring. So when it was my turn to get married, I requested no speeches at all. We told everybody that we loved them and that we knew that they loved us. So if they wanted to say anything to us, they could say it to us in private. So our whole wedding celebration lasted a weekend and we only had our loved ones there. My husband is super into games. So our wedding queen. kind of planned like a Taskmaster style game and everybody loved it. So dinner came and then my mother-in-law stands up. So she starts by saying, I know we've all been banned from doing speeches by the bride, but there's only one day my son's gonna get married, so I'll do what I want. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't hear the rest because I stopped listening because I started to see red. My sisters and bridesmaids were all in absolute shock. I just pretended like she wasn't talking and carried on the conversation with me and my girls. And I mean, safe to say my mother-in-law was furious. My sister-in-laws were furious, my husband was furious. He was literally that mad that he would not talk to us for the rest of the night. And it was our wedding day. He went as far as to not even look at me for the rest of the night. And for the rest of the night, my husband just sat side sulking in his seat. Vegetable chopping sure ASMR. My family's night wasn't ruined, so I had a blast. And then the next day, I spent the day with my family and friends. Me and my husband spoke the day after that and he said that it was so wrong what I had done to his mum on our wedding day. He also said that he kind of knew she'd do it because there was nothing we could say no matter how many times that would shut her up. Now it's probably a good time to add that we know that his mother-in-law just loves making speeches. Like they can be 15 to 20 minutes long sometimes. My husband just kept saying that I had humiliated his mum. He said I'd been a bad wife for disrespecting his mum in front of all of our families. So what do you think? I had to treat my own daughter after a car accident last night because of a drunk driver. I, 39 male, am a paramedic. I've seen some crazy as well as scary stuff working as a paramedic. Last night was for sure the worst. It was 10pm getting close to the end of my shift. We got a 911 call about a car accident. When we got the call, I had a bad feeling and I didn't know why. Then when we got to the scene, I found out it was my daughter's 16 car that got hit. She was in critical condition and we had to take her ASAP. All of her vitals were low and then her heart stopped we had to revive her. 
She made it to the hospital. She had eight broken ribs, which caused a collapsed lung and broken blood vessels, causing her heart to go into sudden cardiac arrest. She also suffered a spinal injury, and doctors aren't sure if she'll be able to walk again. They put her in a medically induced coma to give her body rest. The man who hit her was driving drunk. The only injuries he suffered were a broken wrist and some bruises. It is so unfair that my sweet 16-year-old daughter, who is just on her way home from work, has to suffer when the drunk driver suffers from only minor injuries. I see it all the time, and it's so unfair. I just needed to get this rant off my chest.